Brett Foley back in Minnesota. Here is the first period summary. The North Stars got on the board first when they had a power play opportunity and a beautiful deflection by Willie Plett after Neil Broughton won a faceoff in the Blackhawk zone. Tom McCarthy blasted from the point and Plett in good position right in the slot in front of the Chicago goal deflected it in. Willie Plett from Tom McCarthy and Neil Broughton at 2.53, a power play goal to give the North Stars a 1-0 lead. But the Blackhawks came back to tie it up with a goal about a minute and a half later when Rich Preston picked up a Doug Crossman rebound and stick handled out of some traffic and flipped in a backhander. Preston scoring his 25th of the year from Crossman and Lysiak at 4.25 to tie the game 1-1. Minnesota then jumped out in front again on another power play opportunity. Gordy Roberts got this goal after Esposito had made about four spectacular saves. Finally, on the fifth chance, Roberts cashed in from Brian Bellows and Bobby Smith, a power play at 11.23 for a 2-1 to one Minnesota lead. But the Blackhawks came back to tie it up late in the period, and here's the way it went. The Board of Higher Education says if it's to make do with a 900... They originally gave the goal to Jack O'Callaghan, but have since changed it, as we thought we saw Steve Ludzik tip it in. Indeed, he did. Ludzik scoring his third goal of the year from Jack O'Callaghan and Kurt Frazier at the 17-10 mark to finish off the first period scoring. There were three minor penalties against the Blackhawks, two against the North Stars in that first period, and the shots on goal, 13 for Minnesota and 12 for Chicago. So 20 minutes are in the books here in the Met Center in Blooming. The Blackhawks 2, the North Stars 2, and we'll be back to have a word with Glenn Sharpley after these messages on WIND. Back in Minnesota, here's the second period summary now. The Stars took an early lead in the second period when they got a power play goal. Their third power play goal of the game. This from Brian Bellows, assisted by Bobby Smith and Gordy Roberts at the 32-second mark for a 3-2 Minnesota lead. But the Blackhawks came back just over a minute later to tie it up. Here's what happened. Craig Hartsberg to George Ferguson at center. He rolls it over the line. Crossman stole it, then lost it. Eaves the shot, hit the goal post. Mike Eaves rattled it up the far pipe after Crossman lost it in his own zone. Now Crossman back to center. Over the line, Seacorn cuts right in alone. Shoot, he scores! Al Seacorn off the feed from Crossman. He corralled the bouncing puck in behind the North Star defense. Cut right in against Beaupre and shot a backhander between his pads. The Hawks come back to tie it up 3-3. Secord with his 52nd goal of the year, now within six of a team record held by Bobby Hall. Secord is 52nd from Doug Crossman and Steve Larmer at 144 to finish the second period scoring. The North Stars outshot 12-9 in the second period, and so far in the game, Minnesota 25 shots and Chicago with 21. <laughs> the score at the end of 40 minutes. The North Stars 3, the Blackhawks 3. We'll be back with what should be a dandy of a third period. We'll catch our breath until then, and we'll send you back to the studios for all the sports news of the day. I'm Pat Foley on Talk Radio 56. It's 8. This is the first bench player the Hawks have been involved in this year. It looks like now, here we go again, Secord and Mandich. Secord got in a left, and now they fall to the ice. Uh, well, he spoke too soon. <laughs> Thought it was starting to break up. Secord and Mandage both on the ice. The linesman trying to get them apart. Boy, oh boy. Wayne Bonney and Kevin Collins, the linesman, have put in overtime in this period alone. Now Mandage and Secord come apart. back and forth as the linesmen try to keep them apart. And dare 
they say that it looks like everybody's coming apart now? Looks like it. Now the players all beginning to skate back to their uh, benches. Well, you know, I wish I would have... Uh, Let's start a timer now. Let's see how long it takes before we play hockey. It's going to be a while. But since the beginning of this altercation, I'll bet you it'll be 20 minutes before we face off again. I mean, this has been going on for uh, probably 8 to 10 minutes anyway. Six minutes remain in the game. The Blackhawks three, and the North Stars three. Uh, the players are all near their benches now and have been separated, although they don't appear to be too anxious to get back behind the board and onto the bench. Brian Lewis to sort out this mess and he's got a mess to sort out let me tell you I would think that the man who is going to receive the most serious infractions out of this has got to be Ron Free. I mean to start the whole thing off he was trying to bounce Larmer's head on the ice then he came out of the penalty box after the bench is, the bench is emptied, so he'll probably get some sort of a suspension for that. But it all depends on what referee Lewis saw, what the linesman saw. They're all conferring now to try to determine just who did just what. And now the process of sorting out the sticks and gloves begins. Two linesmen and the referee, Lewis, are all conferring by themselves right here in front of the penalty box to try to make sure they have uh, compared notes on each guy reporting what he saw, how he saw it, who did what. And from there, referee Lewis will try to make the determination of what penalties to hand out. There certainly will be a report filed with the NHL office tonight. Uh, one of the supervisors of officials in the NHL is here, Matty Pavlich, sitting just down from us, and he'll have an extensive job to file his report. So, we'll see what happens. But it's going to be a while before we play hockey. Stars three and the Blackhawks three. We'll return here in a couple of minutes on WIND Talk Radio 56. Foley back in Minnesota where nothing has been determined yet probably won't be for a little more while the referee Brian Lewis still over at the uh, scorers table here on the near side and as we said he's got a difficult task to try to sort out everything that went on it looked like the whole situation had calmed down after an original fight between Priest and uh, Larmer. But then as the players were skating over towards their benches, the, uh, when the players were skating over towards their benches, somehow Savard and Cicerelli got going. They were swinging away and that did it. Everybody gathered around the, from the ice and then the benches emptied. And uh, there, were, uh, well, there, there were altercations too numerous to mention, much less remember. So 
we're just going to have to wait here until we get some sort of an announcement as to what the penalty situation is going to be. It's put a, this uh, situation has put a little bit of a tarnish on an otherwise sparkling hockey game. It's been a, been a dandy to watch. There's been up and down action end to end. Neither team really a dominating play for any more than a minute or two. And a little bit of the luster of a fine hockey game has been taken off here. Referee Lewis still talking it over with the linesman Bonnie and Collins. They got a lot of notes to compare. And they're, they're gonna be they're gonna be so many penalties handed out here, I better get another score sheet ready. Because there won't be enough room on this one. I wonder if they're gonna have enough players left to finish the game. I'll tell you how bad it was. Bobby Kurtz, my buddy here who does the Minnesota games on TV, he came over and wanted to jump me in the press box. So, well, that's all right. I can handle Kurt. It's just if that Tom Reed gets involved, then I might have a little trouble. The captains for each team, Craig Hartsburg of Minnesota, Daryl Sutter of Chicago, are over pleading their case with referee Lewis. Uh, we're going to... Uh, On Chicago's number two, Greg Fox, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. On Chicago's number 18, Dennis Sevar, five minutes for fighting, a game misconduct and a gross misconduct. On Chicago's number 27, Daryl Sutter, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. On Chicago's number 20, Al Secor, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. On Chicago's number 29, Steve Ludzik, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct and a minor against the Chicago bench. The following penalties have been assessed against the North Stars. Number 31, Ron Priest, minor for roughing, minor for leaving the box, five minutes for fighting, a game misconduct, and a match misconduct. On the North Stars, number 32, Dan Mandich, a minor for roughing, a minor for leaving the box, five minutes for fighting, and a game misconduct. On the North Stars, number 20, Dino Cicerelli, a double minor for roughing, five minutes for fighting, and a game misconduct. On the North Stars, number 15, Bobby Smith, five minutes for fighting, and a game misconduct. The time of the penalties, 14-10. Oh, well, did you keep up with that? <laughs> I'm trying to make the note, 14-10. The time of the penalty. And I don't think Murray Oliver or Marvel Tessier has too many bodies left to work with. We'll try to run them down for you here in just a second. I'm going to hesitate because I want to make sure I got the Minnesota penalties, uh, especially to Freeze. here in just a second. Now, for the Blackhawks. Steve Larmer got uh, two minutes for roughing. Daryl Sutter got 
Here they are. Larmer, two for roughing. Daryl Sutter, five for fighting in a game misconduct. Secord, five for fighting game misconduct. Fox, five for fighting game misconduct. Savard, five for fighting game misconduct. Gross misconduct. Sutter, five for fighting game... Oh, I already announced him. Five for fighting game misconduct. Ludzik, five for fighting game misconduct. And the Blackhawk bench, a minor penalty. Those are the Blackhawk penalties. Now for Minnesota. Ron Freese, two minutes for roughing, two minutes for leaving the box, five minutes for fighting, a game misconduct, a match misconduct. All that on Freese. Two minors, five for fighting, a game, and a match misconduct. On Dan Mandich, two for roughing, two for leaving the box. Five for fighting and a game misconduct. Dino Cicerelli, a double roughing penalty. Five for fighting and a game misconduct. And Bobby Smith, five for fighting and a game misconduct. So in all this, in this uh, altercation, the Blackhawks have been given 14 penalties, totaling 91 minutes. The North Stars, 15 penalties, totaling 82 minutes. And uh, it's been about 45 minutes since we played hockey. 5 and 15 is 20. 13 is 95. For the game so far, the Blackhawks have been given 23 penalties for 115 minutes. The North Stars, 20 penalties for 95 minutes. And the discussion continues. What, yeah, what is going to happen here? The... the in terms of a manpower situation on the ice, what's going to happen is eventually the Blackhawks are going to have a power play. The Blackhawks have been given three minor penalties to three different players. The North Stars have two players who have each been given double minors. So we're going to play three skaters aside for the next two minutes. Then the Blackhawks are going to play four skaters against three. Peter Marsh is going to serve the bench pedal. Well, so, so, so far in the game, we have a total of 43 penalties, 210 minutes combined for the both teams. But again, we're going to, when we finally play, whenever that is, maybe tomorrow morning, we're going to have four, uh, three skaters aside for two minutes. Then... The Blackhawks will have four skaters against three on a power play advantage for the next two minutes. There's six minutes remaining in the game, and it's going to probably take uh, 20 to play them. With Pat Foley, brought to you by Budweiser Light, the light beer with a clean, distinctive taste worthy of the king of beers. Bring out your best with Budweiser Light. Pat Foley back in Minnesota where the North Stars have defeated the Blackhawks 4-3. Now, before I uh, get you the game summary here, I guess we've had some calls back at the station asking for a definition or description of the differences between game misconduct, match misconduct, and whatnot, gross misconduct, all of which were handed out during that altercation. Game misconduct, a player is simply uh, uh, suspended for the balance of the game, a $100 uh, fine automatically incurred from the league. That's a game misconduct. A gross misconduct, I'm going to read you right from the rule book. 
The referee may impose a gross mis misconduct player, a penalty on any player, manager, coach, or trainer who is guilty of gross misconduct of any kind. Any person incurring a gross misconduct penalty shall be suspended for the balance of the game and shall incur an automatic fine of $100, and the case shall be referred to the president of the league for further disciplinary action. So the gross misconduct, uh, there could be further penalties coming from the league office depending on referee Brian Lewis's report and uh, Matty Pavlich, uh, supervisor of officials who is also here tonight. A match penalty. Player suspended for the rest of the game, ordered to the dressing room immediately. And uh, the referee is requ required to report all match penalties and the surrounding circumstances to the president of the league immediately following the game in which they incurred. And of course, then further disciplinary action could be uh, considered or given. So uh, really, that's as much of a definition we can give you. It comes right out of the rule book, but there certainly, I would think, are going to be some ramifications in the next day or two coming out of the NHL office as a result of the brawl we had here in the third period. So that right from the rule book is uh, some of the uh, d differences, if there are any, and there really aren't too many, but uh, put it this way, a game misconduct uh, is a little bit less worse than a gross misconduct, and that's a little bit less worse than a match misconduct. Okay? <laughs> Here's the game summary. 15,784 on hand. The North Stars got out to a 1-0 lead on a power play tip-in from Willie Plett from McCarthy and Broughton at 2.53 to make it to 1-0 Minnesota. The Hawks came back to tie it on Rich Preston's rebound, his 25th of the year, from Doug Crossman and Daryl Sutter at 4.25. The North Stars in front again on a Gordy Roberts power play from Brian Bellows and Bobby Smith at 11.23. And the Hawks again tied it. Steve Ludzik is third from O'Callaghan and Frazier at 17.10. Ludzik, a beautiful tip-in. The uh, Hawks were outshot in the first period 13-12 by Minnesota. But the game tied at two, going to the second. The North Stars got a power play goal from Bellows, from uh, assisted by Smith and Roberts at 32 seconds. And the Hawks came right back with an Al Secord goal, his 52nd of the year, from Crossman and Larmer at 144. Uh, North Stars outshot the Hawks 12-9 in the second period. And the game tied at three, going to the third. It stayed that way until the, the brawl took place, a bench-clearing brawl, the 14-10 mark. It was 55 minutes from the time the brawl began until the time they dropped the puck again to play hockey. Esposito having to wait and try to keep himself sharp, keep himself concentrating uh, for nearly an hour. And wouldn't you know it that as soon as they dropped the puck, Maxwell came over the Blackhawk line, blasted one from 55 feet or so, and it snuck by Esposito. Brad Maxwell from Gordy Roberts at 14.58 to uh, provide the game winner for the North Stars. Hawks out shooting Minnesota 13-9 in the third for the game, 34 shots for each team. The three stars tonight, the number three star, Dennis Savard, the second star, Gordy Roberts, the number one star, rookie Brian Bellows. There's your summary, the final 4-3 Minnesota as the North Stars keep their first place hopes alive and we'll have some final comments and a look ahead after this timeout in IND.